guns that the sheriff's department here will be opposed to that. Uh, it also begs the question that uh, I, I've seen something on the internet that the uh, Medina County Sheriff's Department has an order in for a drone. And I've got an inquiry into uh, Sheriff Miller about that. So. Uh, the only thing is how smart the liberals are. They, they, they aren't voting after the Second Amendment taking away the guns. They're just going to go after the ammunition now and be passing more and more laws, uh, you know, limiting the amount of the ammunition you could buy. They're smart how they're doing this, you know? Nancy, you have a comment? Oh. Mm -hmm. I sent an email last night when I first uh, saw that thing starting out on the internet. Well, I mean, I've received it yet. But, uh, okay. Anyway, uh, also, uh, let's see, we've got uh, David Frost in the audience. Uh, David, do you have any updates on Agenda 21? Yes, let me, let me give him this. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I too called uh, Sheriff's Office and said, uh, What are you doing here? I did the same thing. Um, I'm going to start out by saying, uh, Warning, warning, Will Robinson. Okay. You remember that program about uh, the family lost in March? Well, I'm going to say morning, morning, Medina County. Um, um, you know I'm kind of involved in Agenda 21, kind of. Um, there are a couple of organizations that are um, in uh, Atlanta County um, region, we'll call it. One is called the WACA, which is Northeast Ohio. Um, gosh. Um, for area coordinating um, uh, agency. Another one is uh, quite a bit more important. It's starting to show its face. It's called the Northeast Ohio Sustainable Communities Consortium. Um, this this last group has hired a couple of consultants in uh, last December. And I don't know how much you know about Agenda 21. If you don't, I encourage you to find out. Um, I have a little bit of inside the track um, info about someone who attended a recent meeting. Um, I'm going to call them NEOSCC for short. They hired a couple of consul four consultants back in December, um, spending about two and a half million dollars of your taxpayer money to run around and hold visioning or consensus or um, they're now called scenario planning sessions where folks are going to be brought into a meeting where you think you have your opinion uh, heard, but it's not. It's a predetermined outcome. Let me just read you some bullet points from a meeting that was held last week. Um, they have 12 counties. They're going to be divided into six groups. And the plan is to break down artificial boundaries so that people begin to think regionally instead of locally. The plan is that ultimately, uh, there won't be borders with counties or townships or cities when we're talking long term, but this is going on for about 30 years now. Um, the thing they call regional scenario planning is uh, are those meetings that I was talking about. The plan is to go after zoning boards to rezone to allow high capacity building. The plan is to move people out of the rural areas into what they call stack and pack. Um, need to work with elected officials um, to adopt the uh, plans to uh, enact this. Uh, they use a term called governance instead of government. It's the same thing. And the last thing that was on her notes here was that they're going after K-12. They're going after your kids. Okay, to that point, what I'd like to call your attention is that the consortium is going to be holding a series of meetings run by what they call a facilitator. And the first one is coming up on February 27th at the Medina County Board of Health. Okay, it's, and it's free, it's open to the public. I've got the information. You can see me after the meeting if you're interested. Um, it does require uh, registration. And uh, 
I called the Board of Health. The, the limitation there is about 50 people. I don't know how many folks these guys are bringing. Um, but if you're going to register, you probably need to do it pretty quickly. Uh, and if there's any questions, I've got the website here. Um, come see me. Thank you. Thanks, David. Well, they are everywhere. I, I, uh, you know, I lost track of my uh, uh, other email account uh, that I used uh, four years ago to keep track on what Obama's people were doing. And I wish I'd started looking at that last fall to see what they were up to, but it didn't occur to me. But uh, I just checked it uh, last day or two, actually I think it was last night, and discovered I had an email from Organizing for Action which is the new name for Obama's uh, grassroots army. And they are just as active now as they ever were. They're busy trying to organize. And, uh, there's no rest for us, folks. We just need to uh, stay aware of what they're doing and, and beat them at their own game wherever we can. I'm very pleased when uh, Larry brought up the issue of the Second Amendment. There's 300 million guns in this country, 100 million gun owners. Uh, I think this one's a non-starter. Obama's, uh, he's bitten off the, he's picked the wrong fight here. Yes. And part of it is that uh, the National Rifle Association doesn't play by the typical political rules. When attacked, they don't ask, oh, what can we do to make nice with you and make you like us? No, they come right back in your face. They say, okay, the problem is not gun laws. The problem is we got a bunch of unprotected kids in the schools and they're vulnerable. Let's protect them. Boom. All of a sudden the agendas changed, the narratives changed, and the American people said, yes, let's protect our kids, never mind the guns. So uh, I, I think the Republican Party is picking up some lesson here on how to uh, uh, deal with this president. Anyway, uh, having... Uh, gone through all of our preliminaries, I'd like to uh, bring up our guest speaker today. Uh, actually, we're kind of old friends in a way because we've been working for quite a long time to uh, uh, put pocket constitutions in the high schools in Medina County uh, and distributing affairs and wherever else we could. And uh, we've had a lot of success with that. This thing is really growing and uh, we're uh, and there's more to come. And uh, rather than steal any more thunder, I'd like to introduce the uh, executive director of uh, Thomas Jefferson College Institute, which is becoming a real force uh, in K-12 education, as well as adult education. Uh, Bruce Edwards, you have to come. I'm gonna have Marcia now. If you go ahead and start doing what I asked you to do. <laughs> Um, let me give you a, 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 just a kind of quick overview of a couple things. Uh, myself, I am a uh, uh, business consultant, salesman, marketing. That's what I've been basically doing for the last 30 years. Uh, anything that I'm going to be sharing with you is based upon that experience. Uh, as example, and most of what I derived this is from the work that I did representing uh, five different banks, 80 different accounting firms, and helping those businesses go through and better manage how they are doing their process. So just to kind of give you a quick overview. One of the things to address what Larry said, uh, dealing with uh, people are not going to make nice just simply because you don't have a gun. I grew up in a gang, all right? Quick, quick story, I grew up in a gang. We targeted people who had no guns, just to let you know. And where we grew up, out in New Mexico, there weren't a lot that didn't have guns. <laughs> we usually ran from uh, from place to place and stole their vegetables or their fruits, you know, that type of a thing. One of the things, Thomas Jefferson Knowledge Institute, we've been at this for about, oh gosh, two and a half years. Um, one of the things was the impetus was I was at a meeting with uh, Jim and quite a few other different people. And this has been on my heart for a long time was the educational aspects of what was being done within our public schools specifically. Uh, for the last decades and decades, I actually have family members that, um, yeah, we can blame them for some of the things that we see going on in the public schools. I'll make that that short. But at that time, we heard 
for the first time, there is a law called Constitution Day. How many of you are familiar with that? Okay, a little over half of you, all right? On that day, which is September the 17th, it is required, uh, it is a requirement of the federal government to every public school official that they have to provide a copy of the Constitution to K through 12, and the teachers have to teach on that day, or the day before, if it's on a weekend, or the day after, the Constitution. The question is, is what part of the Constitution are they going to be concentrated on, and what is the actual content of what they're going to be saying? Free speech except for political correctness? Are they going to pick and choose and smorgasbord what they want in the Constitution that they don't want in the Constitution, which is what they're saying right now? And these are people that are in our educational system. Well, my kids went to public school. And I'm a very, very much of a conservative. I teach the Constitution uh, aspects, I should say, because there's just too much. I teach conservative values. I've done this with my kids. I've prayed for my kids since I was 16. Uh, I am, by the way, in five more months I will be a grandpa, so first time. Um, and praying for my grandchild and then my grandchild's spouse, as do, I don't even know if it's a male or female, so I have to, you know, be generic here. Uh, and what they will be able to accomplish. I know in working with kids as to what, uh, what influence can happen on those children. I worked with a 13-year-old. The 13-year-old was in one of the worst crime aspects of things in the inner city of Kansas City you can possibly imagine. He ended up becoming a pilot for the Air Force, a captain, and he ended up directing, becoming the director of the inner city mission of Kansas City. Me and my wife have worked with kids from the ages of two and three all the way up until the ages of 20, 21, 22, and then, of course, my kids, I still work with them. One of the things that I've come to find out is the more time that you're able to mentor and tutor, the more that you're going to be able to affect the change in their life. The earlier that you're able to mentor and tutor, the less that you're going to have to invest time in their life later in life. And this is very, very key. What we're doing is, as an institute, we're focused on K-12 through public schools, though we also have materials and are interested with regards to private uh, schools and home schools. So to give you a bit of an overview, there's a lot of different projects that we're doing. I have some information if you want an overview of us. I passed out an update as to what we are. We're a 501c3 non-for-profit education foundation. Uh, we have um, uh, gone through some research and development over the course of these last two and a half years and discovered quite a few things. One of the things, as an example, we distributed thousands and thousands of pocket constitutions to these schools in which they themselves would say that they would distribute. Now, it's rather fascinating is that I have talked with, on the outside the school property, some of the seniors this last year uh, and found out, at least within my school district, I don't think that they got the pocket constitutions. So it makes me wonder if they're just taking them and throwing them away. I don't know. Now, within the schools, in the public schools specifically, uh, how many of you are business people or former business people? Okay, sales people? Okay, there's quite a few. You understand the term gatekeeper. A gatekeeper is a uh, secretary, a receptionist, an executive secretary, and they are there to prevent people, salespeople, uh, from coming in and monopolizing, taking up time, wasting time, right? Within the schools, there are as many as nine gatekeepers to get to your kids. Nine. Now think about this. You have your school board. There's potentially five. Okay, let's reduce that down to three because you have a majority. You have your superintendent. You have your curriculum director. You have your teacher. And if you're doing a scholarship, you have your counselor. There's seven, okay? You add the two school board members, and you can see you have nine people that you might have to go through in order to convince. That is what we've discovered in the last two and a half years, a big difficulty. We have gotten some schools in which they said, yes, 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 and guess what? The counselors or the teachers do nothing with regards to that. So what we're doing is, is we're actually creating a uh, premier resource library website and this website is going to be designed so that the music teacher the science teacher the math teacher on constitution day can click a button and they can do the lesson plan they can sit back and they can in, in essence smoke their uh, virtual cigarette so to speak and do nothing for that day the lesson plans etc will all have those values that we want us to be able to see in there k through 12. this fall we're looking at launching 10, 11, 12, and that's a big program, just to let you know. 
it will probably end up, we're going to be starting with uh, 12, and then we're going to work our way backwards. And that's an overview of, of what um, we're up front about with regards to some of the things we're having. There's a lot of things that are happening project-wide behind the scenes. I met with um, an organization yesterday. I meet probably once a week with the various organizations. Uh, it's one of the reasons why Jim had invited me here, was what we're doing is we're teaching you how to engage your community. We're teaching you the fundamentals of what can be done. There's things that I'm not going to address right now, but there are ways that you can recruit and you can actually double, within 12 months, you could double what you're doing, or within three months, you could double what you're doing. It depends upon how active you want to have. Double your membership, not think about what that could actually do. Now, when you're engaging your community, there's a lot of different things. I have a list. Marsha, would you pass these out? Sure. Okay. I have some flyers. These are worksheets that basically are going to supplement this. Uh, Marsha's going to also pass around, and I guess it is, there it is, uh, our email list. If you would like to get a copy of this in six pages, this is my outline of how to effectively change your community. You're up here, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, she's starting to get used to me, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I work with Martha, uh, Martha, Marsha, excuse me. Uh, uh, once a week we get together and we, uh, she helps me out with um, quite a few things. Anyway, let's take it from the perspective as, as conservatives. If we had a silver bullet, if we had a golden child, and all of these issues that we, that you all have been listening to for the last four years, if everything was solved, if all of the candidates were golden, we still have a problem but within 10 years, it'll be really a mess again. 10 years. That's because the public schools are cranking out all sorts of liberals. I mentioned my kids went to public school. Up until about three years ago, my kids, I was fighting their liberal teachings that they had to go through. There are certain philosophical aspects of things that a lot of us were taught, I was taught back as a kid, we're not going to have enough resources to be, able to, to be able to support the population of the world. We're polluting our world to death. We're not going to have enough fossil fuel. We've heard all of these things, and a lot of this is now being regurgitated again. The surprising thing is, guess what? We have a clear, how many of you remember the, the 60s and the 70s, how pollution was, okay? How many of you remember LTV steel? Now, I'm sorry, it was red, okay? It was red 30 years ago, it was red. How many of you have ever smelled the uh, casting plant from Ford? Okay, out here, I live in Parma Heights, you can imagine. I smelled it up until the day that they shut it down. Okay. My wife grew up two doors down from where we now live. She grew up smelling it all of her life. It's kind of like, okay, this is normal. That's all changed. But we don't care about that. We still hear about pollution, right? We have to control it to protect the plant. We have to do all these things. This is coming through the public schools. This is what they're teaching. They are teaching things, not the reading, writing, arithmetic that many of us grew up with. They're not teaching the fundamentals of critical thinking. Why do I believe this? Why should I follow this? How do I implement what would this ha what would happen if this is done? What is the logical conclusion of this? What can we think this process through? These are critical things that have been eliminated. Now, how many of you remember back in the 50s they, they had a better way to be able to edu edu uh, educate the kids? Okay? Uh, in the 60s, in the 70s, we got a new program. They still have new programs that are coming out all the time. And now it's to the point of where the teachers in essence, don't teach. They basically give out information, they instruct a little bit, and they talk about social issues. Hey, what's the latest thing? And let's, hi kids, how are you doing? Let's talk about, anybody have any questions? I don't know about you, but it is one of those things, and again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention this way behind the scenes, there are some things that are happening that are in the public schools that I shared with Jim, Jim can share with the leadership. It is such that we do not want this information out. Okay, so I want to just perk your interest in that. Now, back to what I really want to talk to you about is how to change your community. Now, I have five more copies, and I will email these to you. Okay, I will email this to you. And basically, <clears throat> it is an outline of how to change your community. And Many of you know that the community's problems deal with city council, dealing with some of the things such as your infrastructure, right? The hardest place to penetrate right now is going to be your schools. 
Now, I have information in this that's going to address the city and the city council. There's questions that you can ask and things that you can do. The first thing that you need to do, whether it's the schools or the city council, get copies of the previous minutes that they have held in the previous year. Review those minutes. Take notes about what those people have said. Now, in my school district, they actually videotape everything, and so I can actually see the anger. I can actually see their facial expressions. I can see how one individual addresses the superintendent, how they this one individual derives and intimidates everybody else that he could possibly do so. Now, that is not uncommon of what you will find in school districts that are monopolized by your liberals. They will do everything they possibly can, and they will waste so much time. Those are the ones that you know to steer away from. That's why I say review the minutes. If you get a video, look at that, and be able to make a thoughtful and, and, and understood uh, process as to what that is. Common sense will tell you, you don't start with that individual, right? Because <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere with them. They have their mind made up with regards to everything they can have, everything they want to do and they'll do everything they possibly can to intimidate everybody else around them. Those are the people that you want to get on up like. We know how to do that? Okay. I'm not here to talk about how to run a campaign or do anything like that. This is from your perspective, 30 minutes a day. Now think about this. You all have 30 minutes a day to be able to make an effect in your community? Yeah. This room right now, right here, to take over the county. 30 minutes a day, each person 30 minutes a day. Now, what would that look like? First of all, you break it down into your weeks. You've got four weeks, basically, and a month, sometimes you have five. Break it down into four weeks. Okay, February here, we have four weeks. Let's break it down. The first week, let's just say you have uh, your um, uh, school board meeting or your city.